follow this example that's going to tie everything that we've done in this section together is if we have a Riemann sum, we are going to convert that Riemann sum to an integral. We're going to sketch the region. We're going to use the left and the right hand from Riemann sums to approximate the value of the integral. And then we're going to find the exact value of the integral using geometry. All right, so pretty much everything that we've done in this section. So first things first, easiest part, create a definite integral. So we have our lower bound is four for this integral. Um, I'm sorry, our lower bound is zero and our upper bound is four. So we have the integral from zero to four. We have two X plus one and DX. The region represented, this is a linear function. When X is zero, that means that Y is one. So if I were to sketch the graph of this, okay, so we have one point is zero, one. And if we plug four in for X, that's gonna give us nine for the output. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. And so at this point, approximately, it's a linear function. All right, it should line up exactly, but it's difficult to draw on the screen. And so this is what our function looks like or our region looks like, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and try to approximate the area using a left control, all right? So before we can do that, we need to find delta x. Four minus zero, and we're gonna use four subdivisions. So it's gonna be four over four, which is one, all right? So, and we can clearly see zero, one, two, three, and four are going to be the various uh, grid points, if you would, or the points that are gonna mark off, all right? So if I'm drawing, something that um, we can use as a diagram, all right? So this is approximately what we have, all right? And we're using the left point rule, all right? So this is one of our rectangles. And then here's another one. And then here's another one, all right? And these should be equally distant from one another, but obviously they're not. All right, clearly there's gonna be some underestimating going on here, that's okay. All right, so this is going to be, I'm going to call it x naught is one, and x one is, oh, sorry, x naught is zero, x one is one, x two is two, and then x three is three. And what we're going to do is we're just going to find the area of each of these four rectangles using the left endpoints. So this is going to be, um, remember, it's delta x, so the base of each of these is one. All right, so the distance is gonna be one for each of these. So we're gonna, first of all, we're gonna have one times F at zero plus one times F at one plus one times F at two plus one times F at three. And the good news is guys, um, this one's really easy because we just have a linear function. Sure, we can use Excel to be able to try to compute this, um, but let's just go ahead and do it on our own. All right, so we know if we plug in zero, we get one. If we plug in one, we get three, and we have a slope is two. So we're just increasing to two each time. So this is going to be one plus three plus five plus seven. Four plus 12 is 16. Okay. So that's going to be our left hand. Okay. Now for the right hand, all we're going to do is we're just going to swap this out with x4 which is four, okay? So for the right hand, it's going to be one times F at one plus one times F at two plus one times F at three plus one times F at four, okay? Or that's gonna be three plus five plus seven plus nine, okay? So we end up with eight plus 16, which should be 24. Now, if remembering back to the other two videos, we know that the true area is going to be somewhere between 16 and 24, all right? Um, and if we were to graph it, we could see that the right hand would give us an overestimate, okay? Now we're gonna use geometry to finish this off. We're gonna find the exact area using geometry. And we're gonna be, um, we have to be careful because we don't necessarily have a true triangle. So this is what we have, all right? So remember, this is the point zero, 01. 
and it's going to go all the way up to the point where we had four nine. Or this is our function two x plus one. All right. Um, and if we strategically think about this, okay, we can actually break this up into two separate sorts of entities. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line across here. Okay. Now this is the point right here. Four comma one. And notice what we get, guys. We end up with a rectangle as area one. And for area two, we get a triangle. Okay. So we know that the length is four or the base. All right. We can clearly see that's the distance. Okay. So this is four. Now this is one. And this is going to be eight, right? Because we had we start at one, we end up at nine. All right. And so for area one, really easy. Is going to be equal to four times one, which is four. Okay. Area two is going to be equal to one half times the base, which is four, times the height, which is eight, which is going to be 16. And if we add these together, so area equals A1 plus A2. then that's going to be 4 plus 16, which is going to be 20. And does 20 make any sense? Well, remember we said earlier that it should be somewhere between 16 and 24. And boy, 20 is precisely halfway between 16 and 24. All right. So now this is the exact area. OK. Um, and so hopefully that kind of helps you to put everything together that we've done so far with respect to intervals. Now, in the next section, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at specific ways and techniques to be able to evaluate integrals um, and also be able to use something called the fundamental theorem of calculus.